Good morning. Can everyone hear me? Hear me? Give me a thumbs up. Good. All right. Great. Um, here are the, all the resources that I'll be sharing today. Um, so if you open that link, it will take you to a page where you'll see several different links. So it's just one easy way for me to share all the links for today. Um, if you haven't used Toby for tabs, um, that's what it is. And I just love Toby for tabs. Helps me keep everything really organized. Um, so welcome. Hi, guys. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I am Katie Fielding. Um, and I am a tech coach in Prince William County Schools, which is right outside Washington, D.C. And today I'm going to share with you how you can use Genially, a tool that I've kind of become a little bit obsessed with over the past few weeks, um, two or months, um, to create interactive graphics. And so let me go ahead and share my screen. But first of all, before I do that, a lot of people always ask me how I'm presenting um, today. What I'm actually using is called... Um, Mm hmm. And I have a link to it in that link share of, set of links that I shared with you. Mm hmm is a presentation software. It's basically another camera on your computer. And um, so I can do uh, cool stuff like be purple, um, purple or red or green. And then I can do some other stuff like uh, give a thumbs up. Let's see. Let's see. Maybe it's not. Just doing it. No. There we go. So I can do like a heart with my hands or I can do phone or thumbs up. There we go. And so it's just a fun interactive um, way to present. And I just like to uh, be able to show my computer right next to me. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. And there we go. Full screen. I'm going to get smaller. There we go. Doo -doo -doo. Perfect. All right. So this is. Um, one of my Canvas pages, this is actually my Canvas page for my colleagues, so my, my, my classroom as a tech coach, and I just wanted to first show you what that interactive genially looks like on a Canvas page, because that's kind of the focus of what I'm, I'm sharing with you today, is how you can use this instead of buttons to make a front page. So this right here is the genially graphic. I also put a link to it above um, above the graphic for accessibility. So if someone is using a screen reader or is on a mobile device, they can click that link and open it in a new window and they can interact with it that way. Um, and if you have any questions, please pop them in the chat or raise your hand um, and I will unmute you. So there's gonna, there could be quite a few people in here today. I didn't know 88 people signed up, so I didn't know how many would be in here. So I just wanted to prevent those, you know, Zoom faux pas of people unmuting and having craziness in the background. So if you have something to say, please feel free to raise your hand and I will unmute you. Um, all right. So this is what the genially graphic looks like on the page. And what it is, is it basically interactive graphics. So um, people can click on it and then they'll be taken. I can link that image to another page. Um, I can link it to, I can have a video embedded here. So for instance, I have a little welcome video and when it comes up onto the screen, you'll see it's just right there on the page. It doesn't take them out of the, video, of the page. So you can have a little video embedded in it like that. Um, if they click on this area that says tech notes, it will take them to my school wakelet page that I have for tech stuff. Um, if they click on David's picture, he's my T-spec, it will remind them how they can get in touch with him. Um, I have a little box here for teacher training and that would lead them to this page, which would have like our schedule of teacher trainings for the beginning of the year. So I'm like recommending, this is my proposal to you, is to create one of these graphics and you can edit it as you go through the year. Um, and the, instead of changing your buttons and moving things around. Um, all right, so I have someone in the chat that says, I would need convincing my IT to let me download. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you probably would. You need to get it approved for um, if your school device, but um, I use a personal device, so I use it on there. And Genially does not have its own video recorder. So I actually recorded that video and I put it in Canvas Studio and then embedded that Canvas Studio video on that page. 
Um, so I can show you more about that as we get into using Genie Lee. Um, but I just wanted to first show you what it looks like and what the experience is like on the Canvas web page or on the Canvas page. Does anyone have any questions about that? Again, just raise your hand and I'll unmute you. All right. So I shared one of the first links is this page. Um, and this is like basically my presentation for today. So first thing is Genially. Um, and if you click on that link on this page, um, you will be taken to Genially where you can log in and create an account. Um, I recommend you do that with your school account. Um, now there is three levels of, I think three different levels of pay, payment. I use the free version. Everything I do is with the free version. If you want the paid version, that will give you a few features that I think would be nice, but I'm not feeling are essential and worth paying for for me personally. Um, one would be to be able to put your Genie Lees in folders. That's probably the biggest one that bothers me is I'm a like, super, super organized person. And the fact that I just have them all splayed out on my dashboard and not in folders is a bother, but also I'm frugal. So I just deal with it. Um, there's really not any killer features that I found that like I need to pay for yet. So that's Genie Lee. Hopefully you go ahead and click and make an account. All right, and then let's get into the examples and the templates. So I've made a template for you. That's the example um, for today. And let's see where it is. Oh, okay. Too many tabs open. Let me just show you some examples of how I've used it. And before we get into the front page one. So this is one example of something you could do. And this is called like what I call a course road roadmap. Yeah, I can totally share it. Let me share the link. Those are all the links for everything I'm going to share today. Um, so in this one, this in this is linked on your page. This is what I call a course roadmap. So you'll see that it would show the students. In this case, my students are my teachers, which I'm teaching Google level one. It would show them all the little things. So you could add images of all the little you know, icons related to your content of all the little things you're going to learn along the way. And then when they click the interactive pieces, it's going to have a little pop-up. And in this case, I just have some text. These are the tasks that they would need to be able to do for Google Docs. And it's just a different way of supplying a checklist. So they would learn all these things along the way. And then at the end, it's going to show them how to and where to go register for the exam. And then they would be finished and they would now be level one educators. So this course roadmap, I've also provided you um, there is this template that I've made. So this just has the road. You can delete these interactive pieces, but to reuse this Genially, you'll see at the bottom of this one, I have that it says reuse this Genially. I've made that one for you that you can then make a copy of basically and edit yourself. So that's a course roadmap. That's one way that I've thought about using this tool. Um, another way and another thing you can do in Genially are drag and drop activities. So this one's linked in that big link of things I shared before. So in this one, I have all of these items over here on the left side, and this is just a background that I created. And so this would be like a self-check activity where students could drag the ideas over to where they are. And so you could give them some time to do this in class on their own, and then you could review it together. So a lot of teachers are always asking me for drag and drop type activity tools, and this is definitely one. Um, and then on the second page of this, I have some like a, a little anticipation guide. Um, I'm using this in a UDL PD that I'm doing. And for this, they can just drag their brain to where they feel they are for these different statements. Um, so another way that you could use this drag and drop activity um, to uh, in your classroom. So um, any questions about the dragability option or the course roadmap? Okay. All right. So let's get to the front page option. Yeah. Oh, good, Justine. I'm glad. Um, this is, oh, this is another front page I made, but what I'm trying to get to is the template, which I don't have there. Of course, I don't know why. Uh, all right. So let me go to Genially. So when you log into Genially, I'll just do a little tour of it. Um, you're going to be on your panel. And like I said, with the free version, you don't get folders. So you'll just see all of my creations uh, spread out. 
No, students do not need an account to just view your items. Your things that you're going to be creating are just for viewing and the way you're going to publish them is going to be like a public document. Um, so you would not have students making accounts for this. Uh, Jamie. You should be able to go ahead and unmute. I wanted to know what UDL is, but I think it's universal design. Yeah, it's universal design uh, for learning. And so UDL is, um, and I will definitely, let's see, uh, I will bring up the UDL guidelines and I'll put those in the chat and I'll also add those to the collection of links later. Um, so UDL, yeah, is the framework for making sure that we're accounting for the variability in all students in our classes. Um, so UDL guidelines have three main areas, the engagement piece, representation and action and expression. In engagement, we're trying to recruit student interest with authentic experiences, but also provide them effort and sustain or opportunities for um, sustaining effort and persistence. So that's really where that roadmap comes in. You're kind of showing them where they're gonna go and helping them engage in the material that way. The second category in UDL is representation. And so that's making sure we're providing students multiple means of representation. So we're giving them videos and text and audio, different ways that they can take in the material. We're also providing them structures, maybe uh, Chrome extension tools that might help with them with language and symbols and comprehension. So that's that piece in the middle. And then the last piece is the action and expression piece. And um, so that is, uh, let's see, um, giving students multiple ways to share their knowledge. So we're not giving everyone a multiple choice test. We're gonna create authentic assessments where students have choice and can share how and what they're learning with us. Hope that helps you. Um, all right, Teresa. Hi, Katie. Just a quick question about, um... The roadmap and the drag and drops that you had, you may be showing this to us, but do those, will those get their own separate pages in Canvas? Yes. Yeah, so I would embed those individually in different pages in Canvas. Yes. Okay. Can they be yep. also added to uh, like a Google slide deck to be added they, that way? You could link them, but you can't embed them in a slide deck. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No problem. All right, um, and someone in the chat said, will they get the recording of this? Yeah, I am recording this and I will be putting it on the ITCs for All YouTube channel, um, which I'll add the link to the collection later. Um, all right, so that's a brief overview of UDL. So this is just um, some of the things I'm gonna show you with Jeannie Lee are a great way, like the roadmap to kind of preview student learning and support that persistence and um, sustained effort. All right. So let's get back into Genie Lee. And this is my panel. You can see I have lots of Genie Lees and they are not organized because the calendar part or the folder part is premium. So I don't have that. Um, all right, so let me get into, there is also a social profile. So any Genie Lees that I share publicly because I can publish them publicly, get added to my profile. And I just added a link to my profile there and I'll add it to the full collection later. And the Genie Lee that I wanted to share with you today is this Canvas front page um, uh, template. And so it's the same, you can see it's the same layout that I had in my student one, but I've just changed some colors. And so you should be able to click on that template. I just put the link in the chat and select the reuse this Genie Lee option. I'm going to go to my profile uh, or my, my creations and I'm gonna make a copy and show you all the things that you can do. All right, so here I am, I'm going to duplicate it so that I don't mess up the template copy. I always do that, it's a bad habit. All right, so now I'm gonna edit it. And I'm gonna show you all the things that you can do with Jeannie Lee and how you can make the interactive content. Uh, Teresa, did you still have your hand up? Um, do, you need, do you have another question? It's possible, but I apologize, I didn't put it Okay, down. it's okay, no worries. All right. Um, all right, so here is my, my layout. So I made this little template. You can see these squares. These are just colored squares. They can move around. So if you don't like this layout, please like tailor it to your desires. Um, you can also, if you don't like the back and the black in the background, you can just go to background and you can create an image or uh, remove that if you wanted to. So I could trash it and now it'd be white. Um, and I could just uh, pick a background that they have if I liked it. Um, or what, where I got and where I make my backgrounds are, um, I usually make them in Canva. So I go over to Canva and I make a pretty background with um, just a 
whatever size item I want to make and I bring it over to Genially. So you can totally do that too. But this is just a plain back, black background and all these squares are from Genially. And I got those squares in the resources area. So you'll see in the resources, those are going to be icons, shapes, graph and charts. Those, I just got that from a shape. So I put that square there and then I just go up to the top and I can change the color. So the world is your oyster on colors. So this is just the layout that I've picked. You can certainly do whatever kind of layout you like. I just kind of like this because it's kind of like a bulletin board with different post-its on it. And each little box can be kind of like those buttons that a lot of people were doing in Canvas last year. All right, so that's the layout. Any questions about that? All right, let's make some interactive content. So let's say that I want to make this box my little welcome page. I'm just gonna to go to text and you'll see there's you know, different types of text. So title, uh, you definitely wanna use like, this for titles and this for paragraphs. That's gonna be important for anyone using a screen reader and accessibility. And you'll see there's some pretty fonts here. Um, oh, good, Heather. And so I'm gonna put this in, um, you'll see that it just, goes in as title, and then I'm just gonna change this to welcome. Um, you can see that if I highlight the text, I can change the text and there is all kinds of fonts. It will just take a second for them to load. There we go. So all kinds of fonts that we can add in. There we go. And now my welcome is that, and I want to center it. So all of the kind of basic editing features here. Um, all right, so uh, there we go. So that's my welcome. Now, if I wanted that to link to something, I would click this little hand that's like click something that stands for the interactivity. And I can have it either be a tool tip. That would be just a little box that pops up when I hover over it. I can have it be a window. That means when I click on it, a box will open or I can link it to another page or another website. You'll also see there's this go to page and that's grayed out. If I wanted to add a page to this Genially, I could have it go to another page. And I've used this feature in, where is this? Uh, for instance, my Canvas tour for teachers. So I have, in this case, like when they click the start button, it takes them to page two. When it clicks this button, it takes them to page three. So it takes them to a page within the Genially. So this type of Genially is called a microsite. So it's almost like a small website in itself. So that's just for how you could use that going to page option. All right. Uh, yes, uh, so Amanda, I believe you're referring to Canva. Yeah, and so if you want Canva for Education, the free account, uh, the Canva for Education account, I'll put a link to that in the chat and I'll add it to the collection of links too, but that's the link to sign up for an educator account for Canva, which is a really great design tool. And maybe I'll have a free PD Friday on that in the future. All right, so I can add the interactivity by clicking on the little hand. And if I wanted to make this draggable, so if I was making one of those draggable activities, I would click the hand that's open and then this would be draggable content. So if I go into the preview mode, I can see that I could drag that word anywhere that I want. So that's if you wanted to make draggable content. But I want this to be like, uh, edit a bit content and I'm going to make it interactive and I'm going to just link it to another page, maybe my syllabus page in my Canvas course. So I would just put the link there. And then when the students clicked on those words, it would take them to that page in Canvas. So that's a lot of what I did is I had, um, you know, the links just taking them to the page in Canvas or the module in Canvas where they would be going. Um, that's how I use this kind of front page a lot. So that's how you would add text. You can also add images and they do have some images that you can look through. Uh, so I can show more and then I can search and so I can say book. And they're gonna, they're gonna have some images. You can see it's a little more limited than probably if you're familiar with Canva, all of the things they have, um, but they do have some good ones. So I could just like make a little notepad. Um, and so I could put this here. And so I could put like little notes and then I could come in with some text and I could put notes. Um, so if you want to like, collect all your notes in one place in your Canvas course, I could put this word here and this graphic. What I actually want to do to make it easier for people to click is I actually want to group these items. So I want this picture 
this picture, this word notes, and this box to all be one basically button. So what I do is I highlight the, the image and I hold down my shift key and that I can click on the words and then I can click on the box. And then I can click this little group button in the top right corner. And now these will all become one thing and they can move together. So now I can make this one box interactive. And so anywhere they click on that box would take them to where they want, you want them to go. All right. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, can you explain how you link it, it to the page in Canvas without being in Canvas? Yeah, of course. I'm going to show you how you would embed it. So that's just how you make some elements. And I, so now I would have this link to something in Canvas. So let's see, Canvas. I need to go to my Canvas page. I need to find it, what I want it to link to. So let's just say it's this course, go to this module, and I want this to link to this page. I just copy that link at the top and I go back to my Genially and I link it to that page. There you go. And now when a student views this and they click on this, it would take them to that page in Canvas. All right, does that help you out? All right, I'm gonna say, Kimberly, go ahead, I'm mute. I, able to, I was yeah. just curious, Katie, how easy is it if you create the pages to edit them as meaning like if I needed to add another page into a sequence of pages, because you know, like you were showing on that welcome thing, you went to page one, then a page two, then a page mm -hmm. three. What if I needed to add a page between two and three midway through the year? Is that easy? Oh, to do? oh, oh yeah. So let me just add pages. Um, I'll just pick one. Add. And I want to add another page. Just add. I can go to this page, this tab that says pages, and I can just reorder them and drag them. So it works similar to like kind of PowerPoint with their slides then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. And if I don't want these other pages, I can easily delete them too. All right. Um, Let's see. So those are some resources. So you can see that I can make anything interactive. They also have specific interactive elements. Um, so um, if I click on interactive elements and I wanted a specific button. That's kind of where I got these, you know, those next buttons or the search button. So this can be uh, a little piece of interactiveness. I can resize it. Um, if I click on it, I can recolor it as well. And then I can add that interactivity or I can make it draggable. So whichever item or act type of activity you're trying to create, these interactive pieces are just kind of little graphics that are pre-made for you. Let's see, yeah. And so that's basically how you add content. That's the basics of it. Um, when you're done, you just have to publish it. So you'll see, you can edit your file name here. And I've done that. And then I'm just gonna to go to all set and I'm gonna publish it. This is where I have my publishing choices. So I'm gonna publish it online because you can see private publication, you have to have the premium for. If I want other people to reuse it, like if I wanted to share that template with you, I would turn on the reuse button. So if you are working with a PLC and you want them to kind of make some, your colleague also wants something, just make a reusable, um, it reusable. And if you want it to be on your social profile, you can turn that on as well. If you don't want it on your profile, just turn that part off. Um, so I'm just gonna not, not make this reusable. And then I just say all set. Now I have the options to view it, share it or download it. Download you can see is premium, so I don't do that. I just go to share. And here is where you can just get a link of it. But what you wanna focus on is this insert to get that embed code. So I just copy that embed code and then I can go over to Canvas and I can insert that onto my page. So I'll just show you how easy that is. So if I wanted to go to a page and I'm just gonna create a new page for this. And to embed, if you've never done that on Canvas, you click the three dots in the rich content editor and you pick the cloud. And then I'm just gonna paste that code and it's gonna be there. And whenever I update it, it automatically updates. So I only need to make that embedding happening once I don't have to um, 
do that over and over if I update the Genially. The Genially is just going to auto update as I update it over here. So that's another place where I think it's going to be a little bit easier than those buttons and trying to lay them out. If you just have to embed this page once, you could change this seasonally um, or you know by unit, you could change it up. Um, so hopefully this is an easy or a good solution for you guys and a, a way to think about redoing your Canvas front page this year. Are there any questions? All right, Jennifer, good to see you. So um, quick question, because I noticed you talked about you bringing some of your templates in from Canva and to help incorporate and to build this. And I do see a lot of similarities with Genially and Canva. What makes them different? Because I have seen home pages made using Canva what um, what does Genially bring to the table to make it more accessible or to more user friendly? Great question. So in the top right corner of a Genially, kids can click to see what's interactive. So that's not always super evident in Canva, what they can click on. So they can click these little hand and the draggable interactive pieces will be in the top corner. So if it's something draggable, they can click that hand to see what they can drag. And if it's something they can click, they can click that little button to see what they can click on on the page. So again, that's not super evident in a Canva graphic, even that if you click the links. So that's what I find. Um, I mean, I love Canva, so you're not gonna get me to say anything bad about Canva. Um, but yes, uh, Sharon's saying import from Canva. So I might wanna make, for instance, a background. So I made, let me find something I made. Yeah, so I actually made this whole background here in Canva. So if you like designing in Canva, you can actually design this whole thing. I actually designed this and I downloaded it as an image and then I bring it over to Canva. And another way that you can make things interactive when you go on this interactive elements is just go down to the bottom and you can get an invisible area. So then anything that that invisible area is over becomes interactive. So if you like designing in Canva, you can totally do all the design work in Canva, download it, bring it in as a background, and then just add these interactive areas. This like this can be as big as you want, and like that whole area could be clickable. So two ways, I guess, you can make some interactive genialies. I think the 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 bonus. This is where it diverts from Canva. Canva, you can just have an image that they click and it takes them to a link. Canva does not have those pop-up windows or tool tips. So what that means is, uh, let me show you one. So here we go. Um, or no, that's probably not a good one. Um, here. So the Canva, if I clicked on this, it would just open a new web page. It cannot, when I click on it, um, where is it? Uh, I'm clicking on the wrong ones. <laughs> I want. I need one that has actual content on it. Let me see. It does not have these windows. So if I click on it in Canvas, if I make something interactive, it's just going to take me to another web page. This, if I click on it, this box pops up. The kid is not taken anywhere. They see the content right on the screen. So that's that interactive uh, window option. A interactive um tool tip option let me just try to find one that has that and i know where one is tool tip is just like a little thing that pops up when you hover over it so the kid doesn't even have to click on it um they here's one when i hover over mr mayman oh oh i guess that one's a click one i made there's another one with him in it this one uh I've obviously made a lot and folders would obviously be beneficial to me. That might be my biggest gripe about this, obviously. Uh, so when I click on this and I hover over him, that's a tool tip. It's just a little window and you're kind of limited on how many words, but it's just a little, little piece of text that can pop up. So the popping up on the page is something that Canva cannot do. The window or the tool tip, it can only do a link. So that's where your, your difference is. Other questions? Uh, so Miguel says, what benefit does this have over Google Slides? Again, that same thing, those windows or the pop-ups. So for instance, in this one, I have a video that I've embedded in the window. 
Um, and so that video is right there on the page. So that's something you can't do in a Google slide. So those are the benefits there. And let me show you what that actual looks like, this window. So here is that video. And I go to the interactivity and I can pick what size my window is gonna be, small, medium, or large. And this was a video. Um, so maybe if you make your videos in Canvas or uh, Flipgrid Shorts even, you'll see there's a little code viewer and you can paste that embed code for any video. So a YouTube video or any video that allows you to get an embed code, Canvas Studio, Flipgrid Shorts, and you can put that embed code in. And then when they click on it, it's gonna show right on the screen. So again, not opening them into another thing. All right. All right. Choice boards, yes. So I make this choice board. And this is just one of many choice boards I made. This is more of an end of the year because you do want to keep in mind um, choice paralysis. If you gave this choice board at the beginning of the year and they'd never done any of these projects in your class, that'd be a lot. So I like to give this one as like an end of the year project. At the beginning of the year, I like to give more of a this or that choice board, which I think is on my profile. Let's see. Yeah, this or that. And so this one only has two choices for projects. So they can do a video or they can do a website. So when the kid kicks, picks video, they'll see the different tools they could use. And then I have these linked to Wakelets that have the full information for how they can make that project. Um, so this is a starter, starter choice board. And then later in the year, you can get to that more elaborate, all the things choice board. Yeah. Well, thanks, Jamie, for letting me know. Yeah, thanks. Um, all right, any other questions? So hopefully that gives you some ideas of how to use Genially, especially to make a Canvas front page. I'd love it if you would share with me the front pages you make. And um, I hope this was helpful to you. I'm going to share. Um, 